Well, despite significant progress, women continue to face numerous challenges in various spheres of life, particularly in the domain of politics and governance. Now, beyond ministerial appointment, recent administration also appointed women to leadership positions in different governmental agencies and parastatals. The appointment by the current administration in the past few days signals a departure from the posture of government under the immediate past administration. While these efforts have been demonstrated a commitment to women's involvement in government challenges and limitation must be pursued. Well, joining us live to discuss this is uh, Femi Lawson, National Secretary Campaign for Democracy, uh, the CD. Thank you so much, Femi Lawson, for joining us. Good evening. Thank you for having me. Yes, please. But Femi, what do you think about you know, the body language of this administration as regards the involvement of women in governance when you juxtapose that with you know, the pattern that we have experienced over the years? Well, uh, I think it is uh, important to acknowledge the fact that uh, there seems to be signs that there will be you know, deviation from you know, what we experienced in the last eight years as far as uh, the participation and involvement of women in governance is concerned. If you look at the position of women in leadership in Nigeria, between the year 2011 and 2015, you realize that there was a major setback between 2015 and 2023 of the last, uh, the eight years of the last administration. We had no, we have fewer numbers of women in the National Assembly, in the State Assemblies, we have fewer, fewer numbers of women in the various you know, ministry departments and agencies of government, especially those in the appointed uh, in appointment position. And it tells you that uh, that administration did not give so much you know, regard or priority to involvement of uh, women in, in governance in Nigeria. But if you look at the appointment made so far by the incumbent administration of President Bola Chinobu, you come to realize that there are indications that Nigeria may be heading back to that time where women you know, are beginning to be involved in governance, not just as being you know, appointed to position of government without you know, credible you know, representation, but we are beginning to see the readiness of the administration to give women key positions of government, you know, just like we have seen in the number of special advisors already appointed by the president who had, you know, three major positions ceded already to the women. And, and there are a lot of opportunities that have been opened for women participation. But we are believing that the Bolatinubu administration will deepen this commitment further by ensuring that more women are employed and are engaged in key positions of governance in Nigeria. And in doing that, the government must look at you know, women participation as a key, you know, way towards ensuring that this country is transformed economically, social, politically, and other, because it is not enough to just bring women to come and play celebrity roles, you know, in government. Well, um, you, you talked about, uh, you know, there might just be signals and signs That's for right. this administration, but uh, having the signals administration and signs... Is concerned. Um, you know, it's not the actual deal. But quickly, let's look at the national agenda policy that was formulated and then the issue of 35% affirmation action in Nigeria, which was in 2006. So with, with the sign and signal that you're looking at, do you think that for the very first time that Nigeria as a country and this administration would actually uh, fill the gap of 35% uh, affirmative action for women. Femi Lawson, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Did you get my question? Okay, now is the country ready to fulfill the 35% of affirmative Not action? Not necessarily the country. I'm saying, uh, of course, this the, the nation, we have a new dispensation, which is led by uh, Bola Tinubu. And I'm saying that prior to this time, in 2006, uh, there's been an affirmative action uh, followed by the national gender policy that is asking for 35% in terms of appointive uh, you know, position to women. 
And you mentioned that there might just be signal and signs from this administration. And then I'm saying the 35% affirmative action or quota, do you think that this administration will meet that quota with all of the, hey, we're going to involve women in governance and what have you? Well, the, the, the capacity of the administration to meet that at 5% quota would depend on, on how much our women are beginning to show interest and organizations like us and the media like yours are pushing for the you know, actualization of the 35% affirmative action. I've come, we have come to realize that in politics, there's really usually no free will gift. As, you know, positions are not usually freely given. Power is not usually freely given except where there are specific demands by stakeholders, by interested parties, even by the demography that we're talking about. How much are the women doing, you know, in ensuring that, you know, we get at least that 5% of women in governance in Nigeria? And how do we get this? It is about looking at those women, you know, who have shown commitment and, you know, interest in governance, in politics, and of course, who also have the expertise you know, and the experience to be involved in government. Like I said, it's not going to be given just because we want women in politics. Take, for instance, the 2023 presidential election. A lot of women went to sit back, hoping to be the usual you know, campaigners and voters for the male politicians, except for the case of one person, the prime candidate of the Allied People's Movement, a very young you know, lady, um, Princess uh, Chichi Oje, who, despite all odds, you know, insisted on going ahead in the race and of course she began she became the only woman who participated in the presidential race out of the 18 presidential you know candidates of the various political parties why do we have only one woman contesting that exalted seat when uh, must our uh, women wait and sit back and expect that power be given to them a la carte no we must begin to identify women who have shown commitment who have shown the zeal and who have the capacity to, you know, to 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 to, to participate in government. So, so, so I, I mean, if we want to go through that, you are probably talking about, um, you know, elective position at this point in time. But we're talking about the appointive because that's what it is. And if you remember vividly when this government came on board, uh, President himself. Uh, he, during his campaign, he said his administration will give women the best representation in government. That's what he said. And so we're hoping that for the first time in the history of the country, since 2006, we probably would just be say, saying, hey, 35% affirmation gap has been closed because this administration has done that. Do they have the capacity? Would it just be a political statement? Yes, there might be signs and signal, but what exactly will we have 35% giving to women in this government because they have promised. And if you want to talk about women not being capable, whether they are ready, they have to just so qualified and all of that, there are too many qualified women who are out there, knowledgeable, you know, they have the expertise, you want to go everywhere, they are there. So the problem then again is, will this government fulfill or close the gap of 35% out of the 100% and give 35 to the women? In achieving that, we must, as advocates, we must, as the civil society, we must, as the men, women, you know, begin to make these specific demands. The truth is that, like I said, no president, no governor will just wake up without, you know, especially when you look at the dominance of the men in Nigerian politics and administration. The men want to have all the elective position, all the appointment position, if possible. So we must begin to insist that the women are considered, and at least the government must be ready to give that minimum of 35% of appointment positions you know, that are going to be occupied in the government to the women. And this was the women who are competent, who have experience, who have expertise in various fields. There's nothing stopping this administration from giving the women, you know, the responsibility of constituting the bulk of the economic team of the administration. We have seen, you know, how women have performed excellently in terms of economic management in the past. So we bring experience and bring competence and people who have the experience and expertise on board to come and, you know, form, drive the economy of the country, to come and drive key sectors of governance. And I'm sure there will be productivity, there will be result if this is done. Well, uh, Femi Lawson, why, why exactly have we grappled with this? I mean, for a country as as, 
Uh, we know that for Africa as a continent, there are other countries that are, I mean, looking up towards in the continent as a big brother. What exactly has been, you know, our concern with the involvement of women, our challenge or, you know, struggle with involving women in governance, that we have had to have a policy to that effect. And up until now, uh, implementation is just the problem. Not for the cost that you lack women that are qualified. See, the, the idea is that we should be concerned because there, is, there has been a deliberate, you know, tendency by the state to continually suppress that particular demography, which unfortunately constitute the bulk of our population, the majority of our voting population, who constitute the strength of any society that seeks to develop. No society will seek to develop without involving the women in the development plans of such society. But unfortunately, governance in Nigeria in the past have been reduced to the business of the men. And that is why this demand, this agitation, and another sort of need for policy, you know, implementation arrive and I continue to be in the front burner of our discussions. And that is why we are still here today. And until we begin to see very conscious effort by government and other institutions to position women and end, you no know, allow them to end, you know, as much as the men are held in terms of access to government, in terms of access to you know institutions of uh, state we may continue to have this kind of demand and this agitation for policy implementation. And we must consider that this is a, you know, a demography that is strong, that is large, and cannot just be pushed aside and reduced you know, to supporters of government and political parties. So there's this saying that you know, uh, is out there. A lot of people have stated that if women are given the position or given the opportunity in governance, it would be a spin-off for the nation. It would turn things around, uh, being the fact that if you look at the nature of women, they ought to be mothers, and uh, that would also bring all of that, you know, into governance. Do you agree with this school of thoughts? I, I completely disagree, and I will continue to disagree with that school of thought. It sounds so much like, a, you know, an inferiority complex on the part of people who push such positions, especially men who push such positions. If you look at where women have been, you know, given positions of responsibility, using this country as an example in the past, you realize that rather than coming to become dominant, they rather become so useful to the system and become so productive in most cases, even more than the men. And if you look at in the past, Nigeria's economic team has always been headed by a woman. And you, the records are dead that even after office, you know, Dr. Ngozi Okojo Iwela has continued to remain relevant and you know, remain productive, and just like every other woman who are in that economic team. Like I said, if you look at some of the women that have participated in politics and have contested election in Nigeria today, you have seen how much they have been able to rally the men around them, you know, to ensure that they deliver on this mandate or, you know, the promises that they are making during elections. It is usually the men. I'm a man, but I'm, it is usually on our part as men that I find it difficult you know, playing, you know, as, as uh, operating as team players, rather. But for, I think the women have the capacity to, you know, get more people to work, get more people to, do, to drive the process for productivity, even than a lot of men who are usually of that sentiment. So, so we're saying that, um, I, I think that you were going to agree with this school of thoughts because when I talked about the spinner, I, I meant a, that, you know, it was going to be for the positive yeah, for women. Exactly. So, yes, you were agreeing to it, not disagreeing, because your opposition uh, felt like you were agreeing to it. But that's it. But uh, just quickly, because we're out of time. So are we then saying that the issue of governance and politics is a gender issue, that if you're a woman, you can do better contributing, uh, you know, to governance and development and policy making and decision, or if you're a man, it's a different thing. Is, is it now a, a gender issue, or is the issue of capacity, individuality, personality, among others? We cannot continue to talk about capacity without you know, gender equality, especially when you look at how much our women have been relegated in terms of governance, in terms of you know, participation in politics in Nigeria. Like I said, we must look back and encourage those women who have shown courage, who have shown the readiness, who have shown the capacity. Like I said, a lot of them, look at the only female presidential candidate in that election, look at 
women who contested senatorial election. Let's look at other women who have shown interest and capacity, who have the zeal, who have the passion, who have the love and patriotism to serve this country and bring them on board as far as making you know, a, this gender equality a, real, a reality in the new administration. Femi Lawson, this is where we have to uh, let it go. Thank you so much for being part of the show this evening. We do appreciate your time. It's my pleasure. Right, thank, thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. And that's it on the show tonight. I am Messi Ebopo. Have a good evening. <laughs>